Now I'm actually going to donate this radio along with two others to a prepper in Florida. Uh, that's going against what I set out to do at first because uh, I'm, I'm, this is not for the general public, like I said, but uh, I made this an exception because he's a uh, you know, pretty cool guy and everything and, and uh, I wanted to help out. You know, he's got all these other preps on the works and everything, but calm is, is, is you know, uh, is out there. So I'm going to donate three to him so him and his family could have something to, to talk about or <laughs> talk about, communicate out there in, in Florida. And Florida, being what it is, you know that's hurricane country. So they hit the sh they hit the fan every year, just about with a potential of causing so much havoc. So th this thing, I think, would would help them out tremendously. So I'm actually configuring this setup as a prepper radio. So what do I have? Channels one, two, three, four, five for Muir's license-free frequencies. And if you notice, it's on low power. I'm going to tune it down to 2 watts, the maximum that I could put in there. So channel 6 is a repeater frequency for the amateurs in Miami. So you know when, when there's disaster or weather concerns down there, that's the first frequency that would that you would hear a lot of traffic because they're going to mobilize and, and to help out people out there and stuff like that. Channel 6, 7 and, and, and the rest up to 14 is uh, weather stations. No transmit because you're not allowed to transmit on that. That's just a weather station that transmit the, the local conditions. And that's a valuable uh, thing to let you know what's going on as far as weather-wise, especially down there. So this is geared more for disaster preparations, you know, hurricanes for his situation out there. And then, you know, he could talk to his family on channels 1 through 5 legally. And, uh, and so they could, you know, know what's going on and be in a know. And then channel 6 is the Miami repeater for the amateur service. So if he decides to get an amateur license, he's, got, he's, he's already set to go. So that's what I'm doing. And this software is the EPH uh, programming software. I don't know what the free one is. This is a commercial grade uh, from the factory. So uh, I'm not allowed to, to use this at all. But I'm going to go ahead and programming it, program it through the cable. And I'll just zap it in there. Not too exciting, so I'm not going to show it. All right, this is just a, an example here. There it is, writing to the radio. All that information. Now, really quick, the old school way of programming this radio. This is the uh, old salt far service uh, firefighter way of programming this radio. So this particular model, it's alphanumeric. 14 channels selectable by the top knob here and it's got 15 groups each group would have 15 channels so that's 210 individual channels that you could program into this radio on a VHF band this is your on and off switch and volume squelch uh, priority scan scan and this could be this button here could be programmed either for talk around uh, direct or high low power. Uh, I'm going to do uh, talk around on this particular model here. That's the CDF way. Anyway, so to program it, you select the group that you want to be in. So I'm going to I'm going to program a test frequency on group number two. So it's pound group zero two. Enter. Now I'm group number two. So this is the old salt way. If you look at this uh, radio, if, if the radio is facing towards you, the two bottom pins, this top pin and this bottom pin, you short them together. As you short them together, you press function at the same time and that will put this radio into programming mode. Just those two pins, because if you, if you short out pins 1 and 6 up here, I think that's 1 and 6, you're gonna sh you're gonna blow a fuse that's inside this radio and and it's a pain in the ass to replace actually so here you go the two bottom and I'm using a paper clip here function at the same time it's gonna come up with ID that's a password
all the passwords on these radios are defaulted to zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six zeros and press enter and you're in. Now that channel zero zero is for like global settings. Don't fuck with that. That's going to mess up your radio if you do that. Uh, you wanted to program channel two. It's already on the group that you want to program, group number two in my case. So I just want to program channel number two. So I go zero, two. Then I can hit function to scroll my settings. The first one is uh, receive frequency. My ref so I got to clear whatever's there. This is a weather channel, so I'm going to clear it. CLR. Clear. Zeros. Now I can enter the frequency that I want to put in there. And I'm going to put one. 44 zero, zero, zero megahertz enter and it's going to scroll to your receive uh, code and I'm going to leave it blank so enter the next one is transmit frequency and that was clear because uh, you don't transmit on the weather station so but I'm going to clear those two zeros because that's actually a uh, placeholder clear transmit one forty four zero 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 enter now that's the transmit code I'm not gonna put nothing in there but for shits and giggles let's go one fifty six dot seven Hertz for your transmit PL code private line code enter now this third setting is uh, alpha numerics you could change uh, you could actually put you know alpha alpha numerics there to describe that and I forgot how to do that because I use the uh, the software but, but so I'm not gonna go that route and that's it you turn off the radio turn it back on again and it's programmed for that and that's what I put as a alpha tag 45 zero now this hasn't been has been uh, modified for amateur yet but I would just want to demonstrate this jack here is actually an antenna port out and I'm, I could use this to uh, jack in here and hook it up to my test equipment on another note this could also be ran outside to an external antenna for better efficiency or whatnot so that's just a, a tip there but it's very weak as far as you know it, it could pop out and everything but it's 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 good enough I guess so here here I am 144 uh, it doesn't transmit. Here's my test equipment. Tuned for 144. Nothing. Dead. Now if I go to another channel, uh, group one, I got Muir's one. I do transmit. It's good to go. So here's that same radio, 14400, doesn't transmit on it because it's not designed for that frequency nothing it's locked out though I could input the frequency in the programming so that's no problem it's just it was, it's not doing it so here I have the in the DOS operating system that ham and eggs program uh, free from that uh, Yahoo groups so it's a you, you unload it and, and expand it out or whatever and there's two files, ham and eggs. Ham is to convert this radio into ham frequencies. So all you got to do in the DOS prompt there, ham. That's it. That's as fast as it went. Let me do that again and, and show you what the radio does. Quick as that. So I'm going to disconnect here so I won't blow up my PC. Booyah! Got it. So let's test this out real quick. So I'm hooked up to my test equipment here and I have 144 tuned into it. The same radio here. Boom. Two watts coming out. Let me turn down the volume. Test, test, five, four, three, five. Deviation's okay. 
and uh, it's working. So let me go generate a tone and do reception. See, I have to tune that receive in a little bit because it sounds horrible with that level going in there. So I'm gonna have to tune that in so it'll receive uh, efficiently. But uh, it's working. It's working real good. So I'm just pumping in more power. And I have uh, amateur stations going into this radio now. So I gotta pump in the signal and uh, tune it to within specs, industry specs. So this is the uh, receive tuning slugs for this radio here. I'm just gonna start from one end. And I'm going by hearing. I kind of know what it sounds like when it starts to get better or worse. So it got way better there. Nice and clear. Keep going down. Nice, I'm gonna reduce that signal. And it sounds like it's within specs. That's 0.25 microvolts going in, and it sounds about 12 dBs, and it's industry standards. All right, so this one is tuned up, ready to go, out the door. Oh, by the way, I was tuning 144 megahertz. So everything from 144 all the way up to like 165 should be within specs. You're gonna lose your top end because, remember, we shifted the reference from uh, higher to lower to accommodate the ham frequencies. It's the nature of the game. Now this one goes out to the FCC. Here I have my Muir's radio or our Muir's channel and I'm tuned to 151.82 Muir's channel 1 and I'm not supposed to exceed more than 2 watts. Here I am going to transmit. 2 watts on the dot so this is a compliance to FCC rules unfortunately there's going to be 2 watts for all the bands so your amateur band the maximum of 2 watts I can't control that so and that's the way it has to go to be street legal this radio now is street legal tuned ready to go for disaster preparedness there's a couple of disadvantages to this radio here its size I mean this is circa 1980 something and the style of the size here and everything hasn't changed in all that time even the new ones the digital ones are still the same size and dimensions and uh, it's a little heavy you know a little heavier than than our modern radios uh, let's see another disadvantage is this antenna port here where it, where it hooks up to the top of the radio here that's the weakest point of the radio it's only secured by a plastic nut and and bushing it's plastic it's not hardwired into the case or metal around the case or anything like that it looks like it but it's not so don't grab it by the antenna and swing it around and and drop it you know on, on the antenna and stuff like that because once you break that plastic bushing and plastic nut uh, the innards are gonna scramble and you're not gonna get no power out or no reception and it's a pain in the ass to to replace that so if you send it into a uh, repair depot or something like that uh, they might charge you a premium don't know how much but just a warning other than that it's pretty tough and it's ready to go so this here this donation here uh, one radio with speaker mic another radio with speaker mic this one here by itself it's going out modified for ham ham frequencies and program for Muir's one two three four five street legal uh, the power has been dumbed down to two watts to conform with FCC laws and there you have it keep a lookout on eBay for the for these radios and buyer beware all right gorilla geek going 1010